my brief talk today is, is about describing you the, what's the vision that Earthcast has that we call the democratization of Earth observation that is basically the, uh, the founding ground of uh, what is our business model and how disruptive it, uh, it may be. So, uh, a little bit of context. Uh, we think that the Earth observation uh, sector as a whole is, is going through some very big changes right now. So there is uh, a parallel that we have been seeing with other two uh, space uh, sectors, uh, with the satellite telecommunication and, uh, and with the navigation, the global navigation systems. So uh, both these systems, they follow more or less the same patterns throughout the, uh, the years. Uh, uh, in, in all cases, the, uh, the technologies have been developed by uh, governments at the beginning, typically US government and Western Europe governments. Uh, and then the, uh, the international adoption has been slow but, but, uh, but increasing. Uh, and then all these markets have seen a starting of the commercialization activity. Uh, and at a given point, uh, something like 10, 15 years ago, both sectors really took off. Uh, very, very quickly and, and very massively. And the point is, uh, both technologies have really been embedded uh, into much larger industries and into much larger markets, so that they are all part now of our everyday life, and most people don't even realize that. Most people, uh, when they take out their phone and, and they try to see the, uh, where they are now in order to, to do whatever they need to do, uh, look, at, uh, look at the parking, uh, look at the next uh, uh, McDonald's, they, uh, they just get their position for granted that they don't know whether it's uh, derived from GPS, whether it's derived from uh, triangulating mm, telephone towers. They don't know and they don't care. So the fact that both these, uh, these uh, um, growing at the beginning and then rapidly taking off markets uh, follow the same path uh, has led us to, to really see that the Earth observation uh, sector is really doing the same and we are on the verge of uh, what would be, we think, the big takeoff uh, of the Earth observation sector basically due uh, to the uh, big data analytics and having all the imagery part that uh, we are starting to take it for granted in our small niche will be part of a something that is much, much bigger. So, let me go into more details on that and how we think that this transition will happen and how we can do about that. So the traditional market uh, of observation imagery, um, you, you know that it's uh, relatively small overall. It's uh, less than a couple of billion US dollars worldwide. Uh, it's slowly uh, increasing, something like 10% per year, and in a decade or so will become maybe in the order of three, four uh, billion US dollars. And that's selling pixels, basically, whether they are pixels from optical satellites, from radar, but that's a, that's a classical AO imagery market that we are seeing today. And we think that that's not going to grow much more than that, frankly. But what we think is that this imagery part of the market, so the traditional Earth observation, is just the tip of the iceberg, and that below that there, is, there are two really big opportunities that are just starting to materializing right now. Uh, one is the, the B2B part, that is really what we call the, the geoanalytics part. Uh, and then there is even a, a bigger one, uh, opportunity that is coming, the long tail of, of B2C opportunities. Uh, there are, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to get an idea exactly on which is the size of the geoanalytics market right now. You can find uh, dozens of different uh, estimates around the, around the world, uh, and even more on the predicted growth, but for sure it's something that is much, much bigger than the traditional EO sector. It's something like uh, 10 times bigger or up to 15 times bigger, depending of, of what you think. And the, uh, and the B2C option is, uh, the opportunity there is, uh, is just frankly too big uh, to, be, uh, to be computed. When you put real numbers there, they, are, they just seem too big to be realistic. So nobody really knows. The point is we are on the verge of having uh, this big transition into just a market of pixels into a market of uh, highly derived product that can extract the information uh, from this pixel and that can embed it into larger uh, markets and into larger industries and basically transform this pixel into decision-making tools. So we think this is really uh, what's going to change uh, the earth observation uh, sector basically uh, dramatically. So 
coming to the, to the question of the forum, where is the money? Well, frankly, the, the, man, the, mar, the money for uh, this opportunity is basically everywhere. Uh, so in all uh, sectors uh, of human activity, you can benefit from uh, what is basically a constant measurement and monitoring of the human activity. That is what uh, the next uh, round of threat observation will, will provide. And it is what the, the geoanalytics will transform into uh, information. But instead of taking a, you know, a 10,000 feet overview of that, which, which is really uh, too much for the time we have. We just wanted to focus on, on a couple of examples that we happen to know quite well uh, because of our experience in the market. The first one is, is agriculture. Um, we have been working with our satellite in that market for 10 years now, and uh, uh, this, thing, this market is, is really uh, growing a lot, but it's not, it's not a new market. It's a market that is quite well known. Uh, there, is, there are a couple of studies from Monsanto that place at around 1 billion the number of acres uh, worldwide that can, that can benefit from uh, geoanalytics. And that says that around $20, $25 per uh, acre can, can really uh, be, uh, be taken in form of, of addressable market. So the total addressable market for the opportunity like that is in the order of $20, $25 billion, uh, US globally per year. Because basically, with, uh, with geoanalytics, there are dozens of actions that farmers can do day to day to uh, improve their yields, uh, uh, to save uh, in, their, in their expenses, and to, and to increase their revenues. Uh, I just listed here a few ones. Uh, there is uh, sales selection, there is harvest decision, that is, uh, there is uh, uh, insect control, that is fertilizing decision. Many, but almost all the activities that the farmers do on a daily basis can really be triggered by information collected through geoanalytics and made available uh, through geoanalytics. What's important in that, this is, this is something that the market already understand. And last year at the InfoAg, uh, almost 50% of the attendees already realized that they, they are going to invest more uh, in, uh, in earth observation and in geoanalytics. And the second one uh, that we know also quite well is water and irrigation management. Uh, again, we have uh, uh, spoke with our customer quite a lot, which are using our data nowadays. Uh, and uh, with uh, proper earth observation data and with the proper analytics behind that, uh, it's possible to use the, uh, the information that you can get out of that to improve the water management activities and at the same time save money in irrigation, just putting the water where you need it day by day and also increasing uh, the outcome of, uh, of your harvest by properly uh, optimizing the irrigation of it. Well. So this is again a huge opportunity uh, worldwide uh, that is similar in size to the other one. So these are just two of the possible verticals. Uh, and, and frankly, the opportunities, as I said before, are pretty huge. But they are not there yet. They are coming, and they are not there yet because uh, there is still no, uh, there are three, no, not the conditions there to be able to unleash this potential. What we found out in the market is that there are certain needs that are not met yet, and which are to be met in the very near future in order to be able to do that. So first thing is uh, a frequent global coverage uh, that provides a uniform, uh, high quality data stream uh, to, to all the customers worldwide. Then this data has to be accessible. That means it has to have the right price point and, uh, and it has to be physically accessible, so stored, stored properly and accessible through API so that you can do machine to machine uh, process on that. And then this will basically uh, unleash uh, a, uh, an ecosystem of third party um, entities that will develop applications and services based on this, uh, uh, on this data stream. And this is really what will unlock the market, we think. So, uh, so what's our vision within that? So Earthcast, uh, uh, as you probably know, uh, acquired uh, Deimos Imaging uh, last year. So we, uh, we are a joint company now. Uh, we have four uh, satellite and sensors in space. Uh, we are 250 people uh, right now and with offices in Canada, Spain, and, and in the US. And basically, by joining the two company, we, uh, we built a vertically integrated system uh, for Earth observation that basically covers uh, the upstream, what we call, so the, the satellite themselves. Uh, we have four now, as you will see, we are building more. 
uh, the, uh, what we call the mean stream, that is basically the capacity of bringing all the data down to earth, processing them, uh, and making them available, and then the downstream, that is our platform, what we call the earth platform, uh, that is a, a cloud-based platform that stores this, this data and makes them available to the customers through API. So we think that by developing this vertical integrated system, we can at the same time provide the data source that the market need and the capacity for the customers and for the third party uh, players to access this data and to work with this data. So we have been in the earth observation market for almost 10 years now, and what we have learned from our customer uh, are basically their needs in order to really do proper geoanalytics, and we use that knowledge to design our next generation system. So based on what we learned from our mid-resolution uh, mid sensors, the Thea 5 meter from the space station, the name was one, 20 meter, we have designed a system that we call Earth Daily, that is uh, a constellation I will describe in more detail later. And what we learned with our high resolution sensors, the high risk video camera on the space station, the name was two, and with the SAR experience in our uh, offices in, in in Canada, we designed the OptiSAR constellation. And in order to uh, make accessible all this huge amount of data that will be generated by the two constellation, around 20 petabytes per year, uh, we have already developed the Earth platform, uh, which is already online and operational. So very briefly, uh, the Earth Daily constellation is the constellation that we designed to provide uh, this uniform, very big uh, common layer uh, that we think is the key uh, to really start doing serious geoanalytics worldwide. So it's an eight satellite constellation aimed at producing one coverage of the Earth every day at 10.30 in the morning uh, with five meter per pixel, very rich multispectral data, uh, and making it available uh, through uh, a platform in almost real time. So again, we understood from our customer that what they need in order to properly do uh, useful geoanalytics, so to properly extract this rich amount of information from the pixel, is not just data, is high quality data that is uh, consistently available, that is repeatable, that is long lasting, and that can allow them to uh, invest their money into developing an ecosystem that they know will last for many years. So this is uh, the system that we are developing right now. Uh, we think that with this amount of data, it will be really be possible for the first time to do that. We are working on that, and uh, with the schedule we have, we hope to be able to start operations uh, in 2018 with these eight satellites. That's basically to achieve daily coverage, and we are complementing that with what we call the OptiSAR constellation, that is the constellation that provides us the revisit part of the equation. Uh, these are 16 satellites, uh, with a really eight pairs of a SAR radar and an optical satellite flying together. Uh, the SAR satellite is flying first. Uh, it takes radar images in X and L band at the same time. Uh, and uh, it also uh, makes a picture basically of the clouds down uh, and uh, creates a cloud mask that is transmitted in real time to the satellites flying uh, behind so that the optical satellite can point uh, to, the, to the area that are not cloud covered and optimize the acquisition of optical imagery. So these eight pairs of, uh, uh, of optical and radar, thanks to the fact that they are in two optical planes, one subsynchronous and one on an inclined plane, basically offer a very, very frequent revisit up to 10 times per day uh, in, in, in many areas. And thanks to the fact that they have a radar, uh, they are re assured revisit, so they can take images at night, uh, uh, during clouds and so on. We are working uh, on this constellation basically as a, a very similar satellite uh, platform uh, with respect to the uh, to the Earth daily, and this constellation should be operational by 2020. So that's a very, very short video to, to show you graphically how the two constellations will work together. So in the uh, in the yellow orbit, you see the Earth daily. Again, there are eight satellites with a 360 kilometers worth each, so they will cover all the, all the landmass of the Earth every day. And flying just below is the OptiSAR constellation. As you can see, there are pairs of satellites flying uh, information. Uh, the, the, the SAR and the optical will be able to take not only SAR and optical images separately, but generate a fused product that we call the OptiSAR product. So as you can see, the Earth daily satellites will be mapping, as you can see in, in yellow there, will be mapping the whole Earth, 
and the, the two planes of the Optisar will allow frequent revisit at higher resolution in case, uh, uh, let's say, in case something in this is detected in this uh, daily uh, global uh, change detection and analysis that we uh, perform with, uh, uh, with Earth Daily. So we think that we offer a system that basically provides, at the same time, the best resolution in, in the class, in the, among the highest, with the Optisar. It's going to be less than 50 centimeter uh, imagery. Uh, a higher revisit uh, with, uh, again, with, com with the combined Optisar and the daily, and the best uh, coverage by joining, again, the two constellation. Not only that, it's not just about the space segment of that, but it's also about the platform, so it's about storing this data uh, on the cloud and making them available uh, to the user. So this, uh, our platform is already operational. You can uh, log in right now and, and test it already with uh, Deimos One, with Thea, with Landsat Data. So uh, just to close, uh, our vision of the democratization of Earth observation is, is not about free data for, for everybody. We don't think that's, that's the point. We think the point is to provide the right access and the universal access uh, to the proper uh, Earth observation data in the right way. So at an affordable price point, so that can be used by, by all B2B and B2C, uh, in, uh, in formats and in ways that does not require uh, technical expertise, um, with, uh, um, with, a, with the capacity of generating an ecosystem of, uh, of players that basically can uh, retrieve all the information from the data set and make it available to the, um, to the public and basically to create uh, added value out of this data. And that's exactly what we have been building uh, in Earthcast, that is a system that is source agnostic, but is basically designed to collect, store, process, and uh, disseminate this huge amount of data, so that we think that through the constant monitoring uh, of the Earth every day, it's really possible to start uh, unleashing the geoanalytic revolution. Thank you so much.